Good evening. Well, that's certainly a tough act to follow, but we're going to try. Uh, my name is Paul Beanash. I'm a scientist at the Aaron Diamond AIDS Research Center, and it's my honor and very great pleasure to introduce Dr. David Baltimore. Dr. Baltimore's been among the most influential of those that have shaped modern biomedical science. He's been a prolific scientist making several transformative discoveries, including, for example, providing major insights into how genes are activated, how normal cells are transformed into cancer cells, how antibodies are made, and how viruses replicate. He's won numerous awards for his work, uh, including the National Medal of Science, and he has won a Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine. Among his most important works is the discovery of an enzyme we call reverse transcriptase. This is an enzyme found in a family of viruses called retroviruses, and this discovery had major conceptual ramifications. It violated what was known at that time as the central dogma of molecular biology, and also had a number of practical implications. HIV is an enzyme that has a reverse transcriptase, and it's our knowledge of that enzyme and our ability to design inhibitors of that enzyme that provide the mainstay of therapy today um, for the millions of people who are infected with HIV, some of whom receive these drugs and are alive and well as a consequence. In addition to being an extraordinary scientist, Dr. Baltimore's also been an accomplished leader of scientists. He's been president or director of some of the nation's foremost academic institutions, including Caltech, where he's now president emeritus. He's widely appreciated among scientists and others for his wisdom and forthrightness, and consequently, he's often been called upon to lead the formulation of national policy in areas such as recombinant DNA technology, AIDS research, um, and other areas. Finally, Dr. Baltimore's been a great supporter of our institute. He's a former chair of our scientific advisory board, and it's as a friend and supporter that he comes to speak to us tonight. Dr. Baltimore. Yeah, it's really hard to get up here after uh, President Clinton's been here. We should all remember that when HIV and AIDS became evident in the 1980s, there was basically denial of how it was transmitted, of what needed to be done about it, the kinds of research that we needed to have. And that when Bill Clinton took over the presidency, there was a sea change in the approach to this disease. It is remarkable that he has carried this sea change through personally, because at the time, of course, he was president, he had lots of other things to worry about. Uh, what he could do and did do was to change the tenor of the conversation in the United States and basically in the world. But now, as you heard, he's able to do this in a hands-on way, giving his attention to numbers and detail that always made him such a rare and important person in the presidency. So that was a great talk, and it really just follows on from everything that he's done for the ability to deal with this disease uh, in an open, effective, and honest manner. Let me say it's a pleasure to be here with David Ho and so many others to celebrate this institution. I was head of the Scientific Advisory Board at one point, I followed its activities. I knew, Ar I knew Irene Diamond moderately well. I was one of those people who was a great fan of her forthrightness, her honesty in facing the problem, and her ability to do something about it. AIDS is a disease that has been with us too long. It's too widespread, it is too hard to control. 
but complaining gets us nowhere. We need action, and Irene Diamond saw that truth decades ago. And being in a position to act, she acted. She commandeered David Ho to be her partner, and together they built the unique institution that New York harbor, harbors today. Tonight, some 20 years later, we celebrate their vision, their commitment. And soon we're going to see a film by Renata Simone that reminds us of this great history. I want to add just a little color from the point of view of a scientist who's followed this epidemic from the moment of its recognition about 30 years ago. The scientific community realized very early in the epidemic that it had the potential to be catastrophic. But it was so new to us as a virus, so controversial as a disease, so publicly debated, that not many scientists really wanted to take it on. Much of the research on the virus done by those scientists who did accept the challenge was housed in traditional settings, in universities, medical schools, general research institutes. ADARC was unique, though it has followers now, in being dedicated completely to solving the problem of HIV and AIDS. And this allowed its scientists to have a remarkably collaborative environment and allowed the coordinated investigation of many aspects of the virus and of the disease. It is no surprise, as you will see in the film, that ADARC was able to make many seminal discoveries. ADARC has not only done some of the key science in the field of HIV AIDS, but has also been a training ground for scientists who now study the problem in 80 independent laboratories situated around the world. It is the mark of a great institution, but it provides a nurturing home for the development of young investigators. ADARC's mission is as important today as it's ever been. We still lack a vaccine against HIV. Marginally positive results were reported recently. They give us some hope that a vaccine may be possible, but we honestly lack reliable knowledge of how to proceed to make that vaccine better if that's the appropriate route. For instance, we do not know why the human immune system is unable to make a protective response, so we're hard pressed to improve upon nature. We do have remarkable drugs. And President Clinton uh, talked about that a lot. They do stop HIV's growth, and they allow us, because we have so many today, to stay, largely stay ahead of the mutations that limit the effectiveness of the first drugs that we found. So we're in a very strong position. But drug-treated patients are never cured of the infection. We need to locate the cells that harbor the virus and to understand why their infection has not been eradicated. All of these are problems for our society, but they are challenges to the ADARC scientists. And they will keep this special place busy for decades to come. I salute Irene Diamond, David Ho, the staff of the Aaron Diamond AIDS Research Center for their vision, for their effectiveness, and for their fortitude. I salute my alma mater, Rockefeller University, for providing an academic surround for this focused institution. And I salute Renata Simone, whose film captures so much of the greatness of the vision and accomplishments that make ADARC so special, roll the film.